show before we move on to Legacy, but I think it's going to be quite a doozy, and we'll see who's going to win between Adam Johnson and John Wallace. And John Wallace here, the number five seed, playing against Adam Johnson, the number six seed. Wallace is going to be on the play. That's another advantage in John Wallace's favor. Even though Adam Johnson has dispatched both of his previous opponents in the top eight as lower seed, at some point, things have to catch up to you. So Wallace is just going to start with the Blood Crypt. Johnson's going to start off with the Rakdos Cackler Unleashed. So he does have a one drop, something that we've seen a lot from Johnson here over the course of the weekend. Is Even though he's been on the draw, he always does have the one drop at the ready, which is super important for the red deck. Yeah, so he did most likely keep a very good hand for this matchup. One drops, only eight total cards in his deck, but he's got one again on time. So Wallace is going to cast a Farseek. You see his hand right now. He has a couple of lands. He has a Huntmaster of the Fells, and what looks to be either a Bonfire of the Damned or a Mizian Mortars, but it is a red removal spell. So we're likely going to be seeing a Hunt Master of the Fells come to the party here on turn number three, and we'll see if Johnson is going to have an answer for the Wolf Token, the Hunt Master itself, or potentially both. So John Wallace on the play, Farseek on turn two. That's basically taking two steps ahead here of Adam Johnson, who did start off with a Rakdos Cackler. So... Adam Johnson keeping the one-drop hand, very important. We'll see what he goes with here. Does he have the skills this time? No, no madcap skills. He attacks for two with the Cackler. And then his follow-up play. Make sure to see if maybe he has a Burning Tree Emissary draw or anything like that. All right. Two more Cacklers. So... That is a lot of cackling. <laughs> and John Wallace enthusiastically picks up his card, hoping for a bonfire for two right there. Didn't have it. But he has a Hunt Master of the Fells instead. Going to gain him two life, go back up to 20. And he's going to get a 2-2 two -two wolf token. So for one card, he could potentially trade with two cacklers here. So Johnson is going to need you know, a Madcap Skills type card. Maybe he has Pillar of Flame and Searing Spear. Something to be able to push through here. Because he wants to at least get rid of that hunt match that fell for the turn. Oh, play plays the stomping ground. Yeah. Untapped. Signaling something big on turn three. Yeah, this feels like a Gorkline Rampager to me. John Wallace, yep. yeah. He yeah, Adam Johnson telegraphing that Gorkline Rampager by playing the stomping ground untapped. But Wallace, remember, that's not a spell. So, Oh, very key. Gorkan Rampager, that is an activated ability. So Huntmaster flips into Ravager of the Fells, dealing two damage to a Cackler, two damage to Adam Johnson, and becoming a 4-4. Four -four. Not that Bonfire the Damned again. Very, very important there. Yeah. You caught it. John Wallace caught it. That could have easily been a trigger that was missed yep. because the Gorkan Rampager Blood Rush feels like a spell. Yeah. So that is absolutely huge there. And now a card that I didn't really think is going to be great in this matchup, Garrick Primal Hunter, actually looks quite good here just putting out a 3-3 for 5 mana, you know, doing its best season in impersonation. But a 3-3 in this board of 2-2s two from Adam Johnson is actually really, really good. And that's what he's, no. Oh, goes. okay. Going for the bonfire for 2, playing it safe. Now, do you attack with a Ravager of the Fells here, knowing that there are some hasty creatures in Adam Johnson's deck? Yeah, that's kind of interesting, right? Where you can you can play more aggressive, put Johnson down to 10, and really start to you know, get after his life total, or you can play more defensive because you don't want to get hit by a Hellrider and push down to 8, and then put yourself into Burn Rage. You know, he can just play this game very defensively. He has a Yeah, he says hunter. go right there. Yeah. That's, his hand is not really set up to race at any point if Adam Johnson comes out with haste creatures. Mm -hmm. So he keeps his Ravager of the Fells back on blocking duty very wisely. And it looks like Johnson drew a Hellrider for the turn, too. So I actually kind of like this play by Wallace of just sitting back and playing defense because there's no real reason to try to race where you have such good cards in your hand. And he's got two Planeswalkers in his hands. Those can't close out the game quickly. So yep. he's going to go for a little bit of a slower attrition war with those Planeswalkers. Keep the Ravager on defense. <laughs> 
And Wallace shows Johnson oh, that he wow. drew a Thrag Tusk and is more than happy to attack with Ravager of the Fells now. Gets in for four, <laughs> takes Johnson to ten. Thrag Tusk, John Wallace is going to go back up to 17 life. That is too much life right here for Adam Johnson. And that is, oh my goodness. Is that, that a, is a four That is a hand of four Hell Riders that Johnson had in his hand. Actual four and not a fourth land, so he is going to concede the game. I have never, I've seen a lot of things here in the booth. I've never seen that before. Four Hell Riders. Four Hell Riders in Three lands on board. Yes, no fourth land. And Adam Johnson is going to concede the game, so John Wallace does win game number one, finger wags and all, as we're going to cut back to the booth here because it is time to give away the full 12 months of premium one trivia time. Year. Pretty easy. Months of StarCityGames.com premium. This time. I've got a trivia question, got for, question for you and for the viewers at home. All if right. you know the answer, hashtag SCG premium. Yep. What I want to know is... At GP Miami, okay. there are going to be three artists in attendance. Three Magic the Gathering card artists. I okay. love art. Okay. One of these artists is from the United Kingdom. Okay. They're bringing him, bringing him in from the UK. This is going to be his first appearance ever okay. in the United States. He's well known for painting beautiful angels, uh, I believe. Bane Slayer Angel, yes. uh, I think Angel of uh, Jubilation. Jubilation. Maybe? No, that's Teresa Nielsen. No, my bad, my bad. Uh, anyway, we have four angel lithographs okay. available from him. Yes. Who is the artist from the United Kingdom making his first U.S. appearance at Grand Prix Miami in two weeks? If you know the answer to that, hashtag SCG Premium. Again, we will choose randomly from all of the correct answers, so no hurry. You want to make sure you get this right. Yep. Do your research on artists, and we will randomly choose a winner to win 12 months of premium. Yeah, it's a tough one, but you got to make them earn the full year, so I'm good with it. Okay. A, a little bit more difficult question, but again, you're getting a full year of premium for getting this artist right. So. And I want you guys to know a little bit more about artists. Yeah. So that's that's what we're doing here. I can dig it. I can dig and it. And now. What are Adam Johnson and John Wallace going to be doing in games two and three? Well, or games two to start. Yeah, Adam Johnson, you see both players looking at the deck list there on the table. We'll be looking at them in front of us here. Two Gruel War Chant, three Volcanic Strength, two Electricery, four Skull Crack, three Mizzy Motors, and a Forest there for Johnson. Again, I, I do kind of like Gruel War Chant, especially when he's on the play. I, I don't like it very much if he were to be on the draw, but as he is down a game, going to be on the play this game, I actually kind of like it. Uh, volcanic Strength is okay, but it does open yourself at getting two for one. So that's a little bit scary. And then Skullcrack is this nice counter spell, if you will, to Thrag Tusk and Huntmaster the Fells. But again, it, it's this thing where you need to have Skullcrack at the right time, have the necessary mana open to really have it be a blowout. So I don't know if you're going to want to board maybe two, maybe all four, uh, if you're Johnson. But it's a difficult card to want to be able to bring in because it does have a good effect. But if you draw it at the wrong time, it is pretty bad. So I think those are his options right now. I'm very curious about the volcanic strengths. We see this in the red deck sideboards, but it's more for the, the mirror matches, right? Mm -hmm. You want to put this on one of your creatures. The mountain walk is good, but the plus two, plus two, getting a creature out of burn range is even more important. Mm -hmm. John Wallace does have a little bit of burn, but he also has targeted spot removal like Putrefy and Dreadboar. So volcanic strength, you said, could get two for one. So maybe not the right choice in this matchup, even though John has mountains in his deck. Yep. You take a look at Wallace's side now, you know, you see some cards that he's not really going to be interested in using, like a Slaughter Games, like a Siren Sandy, like a Dead Bridge Chant. Those cards are going to stay on the board. But the rest of these cards are actually quite interesting. You see two of Rupticate, two Devour Flesh, a Liliana the Veil, a Dreadboar, a Gaze of Granite, two Pillar of Flames, and the rest is to a lesser extent. He's got a lot of removal. He can board in his cards that are pretty poor in this matchup that he doesn't really care about and just board in this very removal-heavy deck against a red deck, which this particular red deck does not have that much haste. It does have Hellrider, but outside of that, it, and, and Flint, of course, excuse me, but outside of that, it does not have a ton of haste like some other versions do. doesn't have the Thunder Maw Hellkite, yep. which is the real big finisher 
uh, these uh, red decks that can put the pedal to the metal. So John Wallace is going to board into a very removal heavy deck and try to hold off the assault from Adam Johnson, red green aggro deck. He yeah. lost game one, so he's going to be on the play. Will he bring in those gruel war chants? Will he bring in the volcanic strings? See, I really think it's just, if you're John Wallace, it's just one for one city. You just want to trade your cards for his, for Johnson's card, one for one as much as you can. And you know, the cards that you're going to want to board out here, again, if you're John Wallace, Sire of Insanity, um, Bonfire of the Dam, potentially. Ground Seal, certainly gone. Um, Garrick Primal Hunter, certainly gone. Rakdos Return, certainly gone. Unless you board in all of that removal. Um, and just trade your resources one for one as often as you can. Then you land a Thrag Tusk, excuse me, which is basically generating two card tree. You're getting five life and a five three body. Same thing can be said for Hunt Master of the Fells. You're getting two life and two two twos. And you're also making Adam Johnson change the way he has to play the game. So, you know, those that that is his goal. Adam Johnson's goal is to make it so that Wallace is never able to do that, but when he has so much removal, all he has to do is point and click at the creatures that Johnson's playing and make sure that he, his life total just stays high. That's all he needs to do. If he can accomplish that, is another story altogether. Point and click. So here we go. These players are shuffling up. Ruben Bressler, a little small talk with John Wallace there. And this guy, like I said, he has been a real showman. I, Indeed. I enjoy watching this guy on camera. It would almost be interesting to have these players mic'd up and see what he's saying. <laughs> if it's, you know, PG. Yes, if it is PG. But everyone having a good time. It is... It's a tense, tense thing to be in the finals of a StarCityGames.com Open. But... These players look relaxed. I think they know that Magic is a game. It's a fun game. There's a lot of money on the line. There's a trophy on the line. Other things, but it's still a game at heart. Yeah. And it's good to have fun. Seven cards. Three. Again, Johnson on your left. He's going to be on the play here. Get you one more card. Does not look particularly pleased with that opener. Saw his shoulders kind of slump. He does not want yeah, to Yeah, look at that. Look at that body language. Yeah. Mm. Is that a reluctant gonna, keep? I think that, that feels like a reluctant keep to me. Take a Is look he playing it up, perhaps? He does he have a hyper-aggressive start? And he he's just uh, trying to get John Wallace to keep a sketchier hand by pretending that his hand is not very good? Do you go in for that kind of gamesmanship when mm. you play? Not often, no. Just play it straight up, let yeah. the cards play out. It feels like both players are, have kept hands that they're not incredibly thrilled about. Yeah, John Wallace certainly wears his emotions on his sleeve, yeah. even though he has no sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Johnson's actually still deciding if he wants to keep his hand, knowing still that so about much it. is on the line right now. Ruben Bressler takes a peek, so maybe we will see in the text coverage. Yeah. He'll tell us what this hand was and why Adam had to think about it so much. See, in situations like this, where I'm thinking so long about keeping a mulligan in my hand, what this my, my thought process here is, if I'm thinking this long about keeping a hand, a I'm, trying mulligan, to, right? I'm trying to convince myself to keep a poor hand. Yeah, there he goes. So we think wisely mulliganing young Adam Johnson. But another factor is he could, if it's, say, a land light hand with lots of two drops, maybe, he's thinking, he's calculating his odds, how many lands do I have in his deck? Mm -hmm. And Johnson said his lands, he had lands and spells that didn't do anything. That was the problem. And well, I, what if, does that mean at this point? You know, he probably has, like, a removal heavy hand that involves, like, Searing Spears, maybe Madcap Skills and stuff like that. And, and you know, looking to draw a creature... Maybe or had like a real war chant. You know, he did have lands and did have spells, but they didn't actually matter. And if that was the case, um, I actually like a mulligan like that, where you actually need a hand that does do something. This, this deck is all action, right? If well, your spells don't do anything, maybe you accidentally picked up someone else's deck. <laughs> well, he's happy with his six cards, as well as slowly draws his card. Okay, so good mulligan for Adam Johnson, <laughs> it seems, with the turn one Rakdos Cackler again. I think every game we've had him on camera, he's had a one-drop. 
until her mom's going to take care of it. Now he, he loses two life from the blood crypt to take care of that cackler. So it was kind of even at that point. And so what this looks like to me is this looks like a spell heavy hand that does involve, you see Mithium Orders in Johnson's hand, and some other things. It, it looks like it's a lot of spells. And now we got a far seek here from Wallace. So now he's accelerating and has dealt with the early threat. So he is off to a very, very nice start. Yeah, look at this. I have never wanted to see someone mic'd up more in my life. <laughs> John Wallace is saying something. He's hamming it up for the crowd. I wish we knew what it was. This guy, I can't wait to see. If, if, if he does win and he's up one game to zero, if he wins, this is going to be a very interesting interview with Ruben Ressler. I agree. Ruben's going to have to try to keep him in control. <laughs> so he does far seek, gets a stomping ground. So now he has all sorts of colors available to him. He's accelerated, possibly set up to play another Hunt Master of the Fells on turn three. Mm -hmm. It looks like he has Olivia Valderan in his hand as well, does Wallace. So he's, uh, he's doing quite well for himself in what, again, I thought was a pretty favorable matchup. But, you know, again, Johnson has won two unfavorable matchups already. He just has land and has to pass the turn back. So that, so that Mizium Mortars we see in Adam's hand, that's from his sideboard. Mm -hmm. Why did he bring those in? So the thought process behind that is that you want to be able to control cards like Vampire Nighthawk, be able to control Olivia Valderan, be able to control Huntmatch of the Fells. But again, I, the, the thing about that is I don't really think that's going to lead to a win, controlling those cards. That's oh. the reason I, I, I'm not particularly fond of boarding a card in like Mizium Mortars. I think it's great at, you know, when you're playing against you know, a, a deck that's green and white and has like blocks it on Smiter and stuff like that because you have to clear that out of the way. But I, I don't like it against a deck like this one where you need to get off to a fast start and you just want to burn your opponent out because you know, Mizzy Mord is obviously quite poor against the old Thrag Tusk here. Yeah, so John Wallace played in Olivia Voldaren. Adam Johnson answered back with a burning tree emissary into the Mizzy Mortis to remove the legendary vampire. But now Wallace has a Thrag Tusk. He's gained his five life. So Wallace asking Johnson, where's your skull crack? And the answer is in his hand. But he did not have the mana mm -hmm. for it to respond to the Thrag Tusk triggered ability. And again, that's the reason that I don't love skull crack in this matchup from Johnson's deck because it forces you to actually have the mana available and cast at the right time. Because again, if you don't have in your hand when Wallace casts a Thrag Tusk or if your mana's down, no, yeah. it doesn't really do very much. It's a very poor burn spell if you're not countering some form of life gain. Mm -hmm. And Wallace has snuck his life gain in under the shields of Adam Johnson. And now Thrag Tusk attacks for five. Wallace is going to follow up with an overgrown tomb untapped for another Olivia Voldaren, leaving two mana up to be able to ping with his vampire. Johnson does draw mountain. Museum Mortar is going to take down Olivia. So Johnson boarding in Museum Mortars. He's drawn two of them. They've taken care of Olivia Voldaren each time, but not exactly the game plan that the red-green aggro deck wants to be following. No. Yeah, see, that's the big thing is when you draw your sideboard cards, sideboard cards are supposed to have a huge impact yeah. in the game. And he's drawn two of the sideboard cards in Mizium Warriors, and they have been rather low impact in this particular game. He's also drawn at least one Skullcrack, potentially two, and again, those have not had a very big impact on the game either. So, you know, that's one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're sideboarding is you, you draw, your, when you sideboard, the, the idea behind sideboarding is you want to draw those cards. That's why you're bringing them in. Uh -huh. So if you're going to bring in cards, they had, be, they had better be pretty good when you draw them. And we see that Johnson has drawn multiples of his sideboard cards, and they've had little to no effect on the game. He's become too reactionary in this matchup. Mm -hmm. All through the top eight up to this point, Adam Johnson has been the aggressor. He's come out fast. He's hit hard. He's won these matches quickly. But he boarded into more of a controlly, uh, controlly deck here yeah. for game two of the finals. And you're not going to out-control Jun from the red deck. The red deck just doesn't have you know, the tools and the resources to out-control a Jun deck. Jun's cards are so much better than the red deck's cards you know, from efficiency, um, just some power level, just everything about Jund versus Red 
you know, th their cards are just better than yours. So as a result, you have to be hyper aggressive and kill them yeah. before they're able to cast their better cards against you. you. And that's not what we see happening. You cannot trade one for one with a deck that has Huntmaster the Fells and Thragros. Mm -hmm. That is not just that is not what you want to be doing. So his sideboard here maybe didn't have what he needed for this matchup. Like I would have thought maybe having a few copies of something like Thunderball Hellkite in your sideboard to be able to go big and finish your opponent off with that big five damage in the air. But no, all he has now is Rakdos Cacklers. Is he going to be forced to leave this as a 1-1, as a chump blocker? Is that what it's come down to yeah. for Adam Johnson with wow. the red-green aggro deck? Does not reach for the die. And John Wallace gesturing, saying, really? Really? And if that thing is blocking... I've been here before. If, uh, if that's blocking, that you're probably not winning. Even in limited, I feel terrible when I have to uh, to leash my unleash cards. Yeah. Uh, like the only one you wanna you wanna do that with is the uh, skeleton guy who regenerates. Ah uh, yes, the old grim rooster boots. And now all that Rakdos Cackler can do is buy Adam Johnson another turn against the Thrag Tusk. You know, the thing is, of course, is that, you know, again, the longer you go against John, the better their cards are that they're going to draw. You see Wallace draws a Putrefy for the turn to go along with his Abrupt Decay and his Farseed. So, the longer you go, the worse it gets. There's a Liliana. That plus gets, one. That gets discarded to Liliana. But Wallace is probably just going to discard that Farseed. Yep. Yeah, so now he's left with the two removal spells in hand. He's probably going to use one of them here. No. A little bit yeah. surprised by that. As am I. With, with two removal spells in hand, you would think that he would just go with the Abrupt Decay first and then hold the Putrefy for the follow-up play yeah. and dispatch Adam in, in two swings of the Thrak Tusk here. So he's holding on to those removal spells. I don't know if there's any way that Adam can punish John here. John is at 19 life. That's a lot of life when you only have two cards in hand and a draw step coming up. I don't think there are three spells in the standard format that can that can do that here. So John Wall is still in a very strong position, but curious that he did not use his removal spell on the Rakdos Cackler to get five more damage through and put Johnson in dead. Yeah, I would just want to clear the road. Again, when you when you have multiple removal spells and you have a Liliana that's sitting on two, even though it just got destroyed by a skull crack, um, you know, I, I would just want to clear the road, just get this game over with in two turns instead of three, personally. Here's a Hell Rider for Johnson, which we know Wallace does have an answer for. He does, but he's had the, the two answers. Could have abrupt decayed the Cackler and then putrefied this Hell Rider. It would have been over. Mm -hmm. He swings in for five. Give Johnson an extra turn, which is something you don't oftentimes want to do when you're playing Magic. You'd like to close the game out, you know, as quickly as you can from a mathematical standpoint. But I don't think it's going to come back and hurt Wallace here. As Wallace that, shows, he's showing Johnson the uh, skull cracks? the abrupt decay, and so that's wow. Yeah, John Wallace yeah. with the Jundek and and he takes up the happy. trophy two zero. He is a happy man. John Wallace is your champion. Jun Midrange defeats Red Green Aggro, and that is going to be our winner's interview. And I got a feeling it's going to be a pretty oh interesting one. I want to stick around. Watch this interview from the